So let's take it, uh, take the problem a little bit more advanced, shall we? So the first time we had a block sitting on a surface with an applied force, but the applied force was parallel to the horizon. Let's go ahead and make this a little bit more advanced. And this time we'll take our applied force and we'll make it at an angle with respect to the horizontal. So how do we solve this problem? You guessed it the five steps. Step one, let's choose a coordinate system. So I'm going to choose a Cartesian coordinate system. Step two, identify the forces. Remember, what's touching it plus gravity. So we know that the surface is touching it, so it has a normal force. We see that there's an applied force at an angle theta. And we know that there's gravity. OK, that's step two. We've identified our forces. Step three, break them into their x and y component. So let's do the x first. The sum of the forces in the x is equal to. We just look at all the arrows that are going left and right. We see that the F applied is going to the right, but it's not just going to the right, it's also going up. So what we need to find out is the component of this vector that's actually pulling to the right, because that is actually what's making it move to the right. So F applied sub X. So to do that, we say F applied times cosine theta. Are there any other forces in the left or right? No. So then we know that this equals ma. Now to do the sum of the forces in the y. The sum of the forces in the y are equal to what's going up? Well, the normal force. Anything up is positive, anything down is negative. Remember, always, 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 always. When dealing with vectors, the sign of the number or the vector indicates direction. So if you consider this the positive x direction, the positive y direction, then anything going up is positive. If this is the negative y direction, any arrow pointing down is negative. Same thing for the x. If that's the positive x direction, any arrow to the right, positive. Any arrow to the left, negative. So the normal force is pointing up, so we know that's positive. But the force applied we want the y component of this vector. So what we need to do is multi, so that's minus, I'm sorry, plus, since it's pointing up, um, f applied times sine theta, where theta is our angle. Our, and then negative or minus mg. Since we're assuming in this problem it's not leaving the table or falling through it, we know that this is equal to z zero because it's not accelerating off the table or through the table. Now, we can go ahead if you want and solve the normal force is equal to F applied, or sh mm, actually, yeah. Sorry about that. We bring this over to this side, so this becomes a positive mg minus F applied sine theta. Take it, check it out. Yeah, that's right. We brought this over, which made it negative. We brought this over, which made it positive. But I'm gonna let you in on a secret. If your problem doesn't have friction, you're probably not even gonna need the Y component. So, since we wanna know the acceleration of the system, F applied 
cosine theta equals mass times acceleration. We're solving for the equation of motion, so we want to know the acceleration. Divide both sides by m. Forgot to put my theta there. So f applied times cosine theta over m equals the acceleration. Again, the five steps. So if this problem had numbers, now go ahead and plug them in. Put in what your force applied is. That'll be in units of newtons. Put in your cosine theta, and then divide by the mass. Get your acceleration. Let's try something a little bit more advanced later.